Welcome to Man Up Japan. This is the first Man Up Japan <laughs> series. It was 2.0 Man Japan until today, until we have the man Tetsuya Shiraishi. <laughs> so, I love that term, Man <laughs> Up Japan. <laughs> I know, right? That's cool. The power of three. It just came to me. I, I was I had tons of ideas, optimized Man Japan, mm-hmm. a liberated Man Japan, wild mm-hmm. Man Japan. That's like Man Up, a Man Up. Man so, Up, yeah. Well, thank you, Tetsuya, for being on this podcast today. It's a definite thank you. honor. Yeah. It um, is my honor, too. Thank you. Uh, and you were so quick to, you know, say, I'll do it. So that's, uh, that's, that's courageous. Uh, because this can't, is be, it? I mean, it, it can't be erased, right? I mean, this is forever. It's indelible to the human race. <laughs> <laughs> um, whatever you do, whatever you kind of, you know, project out into the universe, that's kind of forever isn't it that's right that's true very true wise words right from the (laughs) get-go um so yeah we're just a really uh impromptu today just Mm. uh, so please explain your situation right now because i think it's really interesting where you're at yeah yeah i think it's interesting um so i'm staying at this hotel in shiodome which is uh near the shimbashi station i've heard from um and uh, this is my, uh, it's actually my third day, but uh, as a f- for self quarantine, it's my second day. So I have one more day left uh, at this hotel, which is part of the, uh, the, the special um, treatment by the Japanese national government. And uh, right. since I'm just back from LA, California, where the uh, you know this Omicron virus case uh, was discovered or whatever happened right. there. So whoever comes back from California has to quarantine at the hotel for three days. So right. that's that's what I'm doing here. And no, you can't leave the premises at all, right? Right, inside. I can't. I haven't. I haven't left this room for, yeah, two and a half days already. So wow. this is the situation. Mm. Well, I'm glad that we, we caught you this time. This, this is a podcast about freedom. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, thanks, freedom so. is you have to know where you're, where, where, where you're freeing from. And, uh, right, right. You have boundaries and obstacles. That's why you need freedom, right? Right, sure. Well, thank you for making time today. Um, if you could oh, give pleasure. a, yeah, some, a, your story, like, you know, you can start wherever you like, but what's, mm-hmm. what's the story of Tetsuya? <laughs> um, that's kind of a hard question. Yeah, but, I know uh, it is. <laughs> that's why I started. Where, with... where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> it could be uh, recent. Yeah. It, wherever, just yeah, maybe a little bit of background. Um mm-hmm. And if not, I'll just ask you, you know, I'll ask you some questions because I know your background. Yeah, okay. I'll just try to give a brief description of my story then. Uh, So I'm born in uh, Suzuka, the Mie prefecture, the central part of Japan. And I lived there till like second grade in elementary school. Then I moved to Shimonoseki, which is a western part of Japan. Uh, in Yamaguchi Prefecture, stayed until like fifth grade, and that's when uh, that's when my father passed away. So I moved again to uh, another city called Kitakyushu, which is in Kyushu Island. Right. So from there, from the fifth grade up to high school, I I was there. Then uh, at the end of my the last year of my high school, I was a high school exchange student to the US and I lived in the town called Phillips, Wisconsin uh, for a year, about a year. Then I came back to Japan, I came to Tokyo, went to uh, Sophia University in Tokyo and 
and then <laughs> I mean just explaining about the you know the location where I was that's still takes some time but mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't um, graduate as others because I mm -hmm. went again overseas this time to Australia mm -hmm. and I spent a year in a town I mean, in a city called Canberra, which is the capital city of Australia. Right. For a year. Then came back to Tokyo and there's a you know a very messed up story along that timeline. And and uh well if I started to talk about this it's gonna take another <laughs> quite some, it's gonna take some quite quite take some time. So I don't know. Um that's fine yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I mean, you, you moved around a lot as a child. Like that's uh, your traveler, huh? It's all, you know, because of my family right. issue. I mean, sure. Mostly from my you know, father issue, right. basically. But that's challenging, right? I mean, to uproot as a kid like that. It's actually um, really uh, seeing the impact that it did throughout my life i mean actually what whatever happened as a child mm -hmm. uh losing my father at the age of 10 mm -hmm. and then no father during my uh you know later period in my elementary school then to junior high school and then to high school that actually has quite an impact in my life and, yeah. and because of that it's still impacting my life as an adult and that's that's what I see it now. Wow. Quite a huge impact. What was what would you say is the biggest impact that, that your father's life or death had on, on now? Um, this is a realization that's really recent, mm -hmm. and uh, because I was having an issues in terms of. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, right. I was having running into difficulties. Like, there are some blocks that I seemed not able to overcome, despite all the knowledge, learnings, and then all these activities that I've done. Like, learned mm -hmm. a lot, and you know, uh, I thought I was trying to whatever uh, make headways as an entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. somehow. It was not happening, and uh, and if you were entrepreneur, 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 there are certain um, things that you have to do, which probably is not necessary if you're just working for corporation or you know company employee, um, because you have to. You know, sell your product. You have to kind of a, put up a flag. Okay, I'm going in this direction. I have this vision. Mm -hmm. You have to take have some leadership, and uh, and uh, but of course you have to be. You have to attract customers, and and uh, that sort of a skill sets that. Um, it requires a kind of a fatherly quality, I think. Oh, right, right. Yep. You know, it does. Um, when you have lots of trauma, uh, of course, you, you have to, you know, I've, I've done that trying to heal myself because of the so much traumas, traumas in my past that uh, mm -hmm. that requires like more like a mother kind of energy, more like a female energy. Right. And uh, female energy is required to heal yourself. And healing is, of course, required. And uh, that's what I also needed for a long time. And I've, I've worked on it, like took some, you know, counseling kind of thing and uh, mm -hmm. had some spiritual counselings and right. uh, other things. But uh, what I was missing was more like a fatherly quality, you know, mm -hmm. fatherly quality is yeah pretty much man up kind of thing right mm. so you have to be able to fight somebody when something stands in front of you and try to 
block your way that you have to fight it sometimes then you have to say no to things that that is not uh optimal for your growth or mm. you know moving mm. forward and uh, that requires not the motherly quality but the fatherly quality i think sure. so so that that aspect i think i it was really missing from my childhood and uh, i thought i could overcome it um you know, I, I was kind of trying to brush it off, actually. Oh, it's a mm. long time ago, you know. I didn't have right. a father, so what? So mm. that's how I was seeing uh, the world. Uh, but uh, it, it is quite recent that I kind of came to a realization that I have to actually look at this area of my life. So mm. I, I did that. And mm. it's actually making a great change. Mm in terms of how I, not just how I look at my past, but how I deal with the situations now. It is, you actually have, you actually, um, my understanding now is that you have to actually change the past in order to be able to face what is happening in, in the present. Mm -hmm. And that had a lot to do with my childhood, uh, childhood and my father issue. That's mm -hmm. interesting. I was just reading just a couple of hours ago, there's a book called The Psychology of Wealth. This is mm -hmm. as a man named Paul Council, and he talks about all of our conditioning is, is already, we're indoctrinated, indoctrinated by the time we're 10. So mm -hmm. you're talking about your father dying when you were 10. So Right. Mm. Yep. Yeah, thanks for the share. That's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's gotta be tough. I, 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 that was one of my biggest fears as a child, actually, that my parents would die. Something I thought mm -hmm. about, I think every day that my mm -hmm. parents would die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's every child. Okay. That's a fear of every child. Right, right. 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 But in my case, like it just happened, you know, out of the blue. So right. when that happened, you know, as a child, what sort of, uh, consideration popped up in your mind but and into your subconscious and mm. that kind of you know continues to make some impacts to make decision as an adult you know because it's a uh, inner child you know there, right, right. there are many inner ch there are many inner children mm. and uh some of them keep holding to this kind of a belief or whatever, whatever the, uh, the thoughts you had then, right. Which is still impacts you now. You know. and how do you rewrite the, the past? Do you have a technique or? Yeah. Recently I learned into this uh, technique um, to kind of relight my past, mm -hmm. which was very interesting because uh, I kind of knew it uh, as I did some, you know, inner work, Mm -hmm. uh in different areas like in acting as well but uh recently um i had this counselor and uh i had a session with him and uh the way he uh approached this issue was very interesting because mm -hmm. uh, he actually showed me the way how to uh, change your past like i had Real, I realized that uh, I had a deep belief that, you know, there are certain things in my past that I can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stuck. You know, I have this pattern that I'm repeating and uh, mm -hmm. there are certain things that I can't change. And, but it turned out that's not, to, not that's not true. You mm -hmm. can actually change anything in your past. Mm -hmm. Cause I had this issue about, about not able to face up to the bullies or the force because right. I had this issue when I was like in the you know fifth grade up to like junior high school I was like had I had this very violent kind of environment where you know bullies are everywhere and mm. bullies were running the school <laughs> and I couldn't stand up to them and that was my biggest kind of a trauma mm. I couldn't face up to the bullies and I kind of kept myself silent and uh and that's how it was. And mm. that's still impacting my communication in the real world. Right. And uh, 
And that's the area that I needed to tackle as an entrepreneur as well. And, mm. uh, you know, so there was an issue, there was one incident where one bully was kind of beating, beating the shit out of my friend in mm. front of everybody. Mm. Everybody was watching and this bully was kneel, kneeling and punching and mm. really, um, Being yeah, mm. kicking ass. And, mm. and uh, I, I wanted to, you know, confront him and face him and do something about it, mm -hmm. but I couldn't. Mm. And that was the sort of a really big trauma for myself. Right. And uh, so in this counseling session, you know, you actually change it. Like um, one, one approach was that, you know, I'm an I'm a adult, so I could just go there and uh, go in there and just, there's a six, grade incident so this right. is a sixth grade kid right so i just got to beat the shit out of him right, boom right. then i said right. what the fuck are you doing you know right, right, right. What, are, what are you fucking bullying my friend mm. just pick him up and bring this little bully to the schoolmaster or the teacher or whatever what right, right. the fuck kind of education is this right right and actually go in and said sort of do it in the session mm. and that actually changes things all ah, right you know, internally and wow, mm. you know, mm. it's, it's pretty much quite, you know, like acting, you know, because you do it in the present time, what right. you didn't do in the, in your past. Right. And, uh, oops, <laughs> there's an announcement from the hotel. Okay. Okay. This is, this veri verifies the situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's the one approach. And there's another approach because, you know, there's still, in my memory, I couldn't face this bully mm. as a child. Mm. And uh, it's not like every, every time this adult me is going to come in and save you, right? So, again, then there's a, I will be the sixth grader B. I'm going to go in there mm. and then see another situation where the bully is pulling another kid or something. Mm -hmm. And then I will create, uh, I will create something, create a new reality in mm. my past. Mm. So as a sixth grader, I will go in there and then I will confront this bully. Mm. What the fuck are you doing? Mm. Huh? You want to fight? Come on. Boom. Mm. Mm. You know, it takes some courage, but uh, when you do it, mm. it changes, it actually changes your past. Right. Because you're no longer, uh, you don't have to actually be constrained to your past experiences, whatever mm. the, uh, the feeling of um, if you're feeling helpless. You cannot do anything about it. Right. That can be changed as you really face what happened in your past. Mm. And actually, you will take some steps to uh, change things. And if you have a good counselor who has this fatherly quality, then he can guide you. Right. You know, because that's what's missing. You know, I don't know what real father would do. I don't know what, you know father figure who is strong who who will um encourage me as a as a man mm. you know i had the, i had mother all the time but my mother was helpless you know she couldn't do anything about these kind of situations but yeah. and uh for me you know the absence of father was the norm so mm. i don't know what's the norm would be like you know would the father would, would encourage me to fight against the bully or would the father be proud of me beating the shit out of the bully? Mm -hmm. And that, that that would be possible. I mean, I would be happy if, you know, my father was there, you know, encouraging me to stand up to the bully. Right, right. And, uh, but, you know, because it never existed in my reality, I didn't know, you know. Mm. And, and in that way, with the proper guidance, you can actually change your past.
right. and change your now. That's what I've been experiencing recently. Yes. That's cool. Thank you for sharing that. And that you feel that changing. Is there any situation in the, your present life where you, there's any kind of bullying? Is it, does that come out in any way? Uh, not much of a bullying. I mean, I don't really have a bullying situation at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one of the uh, issues that I was facing as an entrepreneur was that I couldn't um, create a new course mm -hmm. because I was kind of afraid uh, for some reason. And uh, mm -hmm. after I had this session, I was able to create a new course. And, That's great. Yeah. And, you know, did whatever the... the promotion and uh, uh, attracted like uh, 12 students. And mm. this was um, never done mm. as myself. You know, I, I, I could do it with other, uh, in partnership with others, but mm. I couldn't do it myself. So it's a, it's a big step for me, you know. Bravo, man. That's, uh, that's really big. 12, 12 people came in because of, yeah, right. That's uh, so you're going to yeah. impact, empower. 12 more people and that's all also income as well right so yeah well, that's really cool is this in japan is this is the uh the counselor is or the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. in japan yeah japanese person it's a japanese person uh, is there a style is there a name of the of the technique it's, re it's really uh, just literally you know uh father right father ship or father figure kind of counseling you know mm. And it's interesting because he's the only person that has this kind of a title. Mm -hmm. uh, when I check out different counselors, you know, there's lots of um, more like a mothery figure counselors, but uh, All right. not many would kind of promote this, you know, fatherhood kind of counseling, you know. Mm. He's the only one that I found. If it's okay, later I'll, I'll ask you for the, the link because we can put this in. Anything we talk about, I like to put in the, below the video so that people can, you know, maybe look at it if it, because it's how, I mean, this could be a fear is, my God, like fear is, can paralyze you as an entrepreneur, right? Just the one fear yeah. of like public speaking, yeah. for example. Fear, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. A fear of being, you know, scrutinized or judged, mm -hmm. you know, if you put stuff up on social media or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. So wow, that's uh, that's great to hear. Um, mm. Is there anything else from from your past that you wanted to to share? <laughs> well, I have many interesting past, but uh, which one? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> will be. Uh, well, let me uh, talk a bit about how we met. This is great, quite interesting. We met online, right? right? We, we both live yeah. in Tokyo. But mm -hmm. we were in uh, Roger Hamilton. There's a guy named Roger ha Roger Hamilton. That, yeah. Um, what is the name? I'm spacing on the name. Um, Genius U or Wealth Dynamics. Or... Wealth Dynamics. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It was a seminar that we had both gone to, and then we we were on an online seminar that was like a five day kind mm -hmm. of intensive seminar, and yeah, there were probably fifty people in that group, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I watched Tetsuya, and I thought. I want to meet you. So I kind of reached out and then we met and that was, yeah, really that was nice. nice of you. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a nice meeting. I mean, that's, and that's, you know, reaching out to people that you feel some affinity for is quite mm -hmm. powerful. And I remember that the day we met, I thought, wow, Tetsu, we're like, we're like the same person. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many, I talk too much. I was a bit too excited, but you're talking about the intensity. So Kyokutan. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Right. Yeah. Kyokutan brothers, we call Kyokutan them brothers, right? <laughs> Kyokutan yeah. means intense, I guess, in Japanese. Intense, yeah. yeah. But you've done extremist. things. Like, extremist, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Like fasting, you've done this, fasting. you've done Wim Hof, these kind Wim of Wim Hof, Hof. Yeah. Did that. Yeah. Um, all kinds Cold of shower. spiritual, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. Um, and acting, and I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I didn't really learn acting, but I was doing acting for years. Mm -hmm. Um Right. So, and then from that, you know, it was like, uh, it was like you had offered us, I think it was immediate. You offered Hitomi and I, you know, mm -hmm. to take our course. So we did. Um, right. How many weeks is the course? Uh, it's usually four weeks. 
Okay. Did we do it in four weeks? Probably. I think, it was longer. I think we had five times. I think. Okay. We did. Yeah. That was so cool. Um, and I, I mean, I was on a stage for 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. And that was really, I was uncomfortable, like a, lo a lot mm -hmm. of the times. And to think through things and to analyze and then actually to bring that together, mm -hmm. you know, in, in acting, you know, right. a lot, you know, it's not even, so it's like this in a Zoom, Zoom session with my wife. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was really game changing. Thank you for that. Yeah, it was cool to be able to do, do it. I mean, deliver mm -hmm. that to you, you know. Thank you. And from that, I mean, I, we've been doing, so here's a free thing right here, like, like Tetsuya is saying about being bullied and not having something. I, I think all of us, most guys probably have experienced bullying. Um, mm -hmm. I had several times as a kid um, and just like out of the blue, somebody, it's just that upper edge. Somebody thinks they're tougher or stronger. Usually these guys have older brothers or their dads beat them up. So they're, yeah. they're kind of taking it out on somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had it too. And I've cowered times even as an adult i've i've been bullied uh uh even mm. just within the past three years um mm. but um yeah just to to get out and i mean i've had a a gym for well seven mm. years now five years officially but i've been training about seven years and mm. just now just about two months ago we started mm. to do daily content daily videos mm. right. and sometimes it's just impromptu it's just turn mm. on the phone and start talking or mm -hmm. You create these little things and it's better it's mm. much better um uh the coffee one like i mean this is a little bit of fun in it and there's there's yeah yeah that was space fun. yeah yeah mm. i have space where before i would think i gotta get this perfect you know it's mm -hmm. i'm gonna do it in english it's easier of course but japanese is mm. i would get nervous and i don't so mm. thank you that's great yeah yeah, yeah i mean it's great a, to see the, the testimonial the results yeah mm. thank you mm. um out of all the things you did, like so, so these Wim Hof and um, mm -hmm. these kind of spiritual things, what, what was the most adventurous? What was the most beneficial, maybe? Well, um, for that, probably uh, this acting technique, which is not really spiritual, maybe not spiritual, but uh, I think it is, it is kind of spiritual, yeah, mm. yeah, so. That has, uh, yeah, that has brought the most impact, I think, in my life because it's now, you know, it's my livelihood and uh, it's what I've been doing right. as, a, as my business. So, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I've, I've tried many different, I mean, I've done a lot of things and, you know, studied a lot of things, but... Uh, it is the only one that has actually, you know, become my business. So, mm. yeah. And this is the power of the actor. Is this, is this, what would you call it? Yeah. The, the book, the book is the power of the actor and the technique is the Chabak technique, uh, which is developed by the, uh, the acting coach Ivana Chabak and which, who I uh, represent in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am the translator of a book, and uh, also you know I host a workshop and events uh, in Tokyo and in LA. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably the biggest influence in my life. How did you find her? Um, <laughs> you know, it was in like early two thousand. Uh, it was. 2012 or 2013 or something. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I was I was taking a acting workshop and uh, it was also an audition for a, a film mm -hmm. uh, to be created by the Australian director. And uh, as part of the the workshops, uh, there was one casting director from Australia who introduced us to different acting techniques, and one of them was uh, Ivana's. And uh, he introduced us the uh, the book Power of the Actor, mm -hmm. and uh, immediately purchased it uh, by Kindle. And uh, somehow, you know, they, he introduced me many different teachers and different books. But uh, somehow, this title, The Power of the Actor, 
kind of resonated with me. Mm-hmm. So that's the first encounter. And the actual real person, in-person encounter was in uh, 2013. Uh, 2013, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was visiting LA to uh, do some networking with uh, actors because I was wanted to do something to uh, bridge Hollywood and uh, Japanese entertainment industry. Mm. And uh, there I uh, all of a sudden had this inspiration, oh, I should contact Ivana because she, she, she has to be in LA because she's a Hollywood acting coach. So I looked up the uh, website and uh, found her email mm. address and just sent her an email, right. showed her an email saying like, you know, I'm interested in bringing your technique to Japan. You know, which was the only way I could just think of, like, you mm-hmm. know, uh, I was interested in, as an actor to learn her technique, but uh, I thought, like, if I were just to go there as an actor, you know, I could be anybody. I could, I'm just a nobody from nowhere. So mm. I thought the approach I could take was that, you know, I want to bring your technique to Japan, which kind of flushed into my head. So Right. into my mind so I just shot that email yeah. and uh, and luckily fortunately uh, mm. she just responded instantly and we met mm. and uh, so the story yeah. story yeah. goes you, know. you created it oh that's cool yeah mm. and uh, and she said the uh, you know she can only come to Japan if the book was to be translated, book were in Japanese, because uh, she goes to uh, places where audiences speak English, but uh, not to uh, non-English speaking countries unless the books are in their own language. Right. So that was a requirement that I said, okay, I'm a translator, so I'll translate your book. <laughs> you know. And there was no, you know, guarantee that it's got the book's going to get translated or anything but uh i kind of knew that it's going to be translated so i had no doubts you know mm. there was no guarantee there was no publisher but i just started translating and uh translated the whole book i mean the the, the part that was translated and uh then i went to publishers mm-hmm. with a proposal and found it you know mm. awesome that's a big project though, right? A book like that, 200 and some pages or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not short, right? Yeah, um, that time I kept a quite uh, tight schedule. Right? It's pretty much like nine to five kind of thing. Like, All right. I'm going to translate nine to five for the whole month or something like that. Mm. And I think it took me like two months or something to wow. do the draft, trans- you know, rough translation. Right. Yeah, but that was enough to actually you know, bring that to the publisher. Okay, this book is already translated, and I got the permission to, you know, to uh, to bring this to be published. So, yeah, it actually helped. In it's it's not the uh, usual pattern of the foreign books to be translated into Japanese books, but uh, mm. I just did what I thought would be yeah. best, and it worked. So it worked. That's good. What would you say yeah. that you learn most from working with Ivana? Um, it's, it's very interesting because she's the only person that I get so deeply involved in of mm. all the people that I try to contact, you know, mm. throughout the, throughout the years. And, uh, but it's very special because She's an acting coach, but she's not just an acting coach, but she's probably most influential in planet-wide acting coach on the planet at the moment, I think. Mm. There are other you know, acting teachers that are famous, but probably not as active as Ivana, who is traveling all over the world, uh, spreading her words. She's almost like a evangelist or the preacher, mm. you know, preaching through, act, through the arts. So that's... She, she takes that kind of approach and empowerment through the arts. That's her mm. sort of mm. slogan. And, uh, 
and she has this big kind of a vision and mission to uh, to better the planet through her technique, through her mm. acting technique, and uh, that's uh, that's something that I'm kind of you know energetically kind of trans trans how do I say how transmuted trans trans passed on I mean she mm. kind of absorbs her energy mm. by being near her mm. and uh, it was interesting because she when when I met her it was like she traveled to Israel a little before and uh, mm. she was in this actually very kind of a spiritual kind of place mm. and she uh, she prayed that uh, you know, um, please, God, let me, you know, be bring some kind of um, bring some greatness to change the world for the better or something. That she had some kind of a uh, made some wish to leave her legacy planet wide. Mm -hmm. And she was saying that after that, then you know all the all, all the channels, uh, international kind of really opened up. Mm. And she, after that, she was going all over the all over the world, and mm. and uh, so that's why she was really open to travel to Japan as well. She wanted to leave her legacy to Japan as well in mm. Asia. Mm. You know, now she's traveling. She's you know went to China to went to Korea. I mean. Uh, I think the Korean version is going to be out soon. And mm. She was doing all this, you know, she was in Mongolia, Kazakhstan, all this weird, wow. I mean, uh, <laughs> unheard places, you know. Right, right. Sorry for those people who it's are from okay, there. But, yeah, right. yeah, but so she's really going places and uh, and to be part of, included in her world and being close to her um, mm. gives me kind of a, vision to be mm. to be one wanted to be somewhat like her mm, and right. uh i wanted to it is my vision that i wanted to be like her you know and uh it's something that was granted to me that um having such a role model mm. uh, as a mentor somebody like her is it's it's really encouraging me that well maybe i can do something like that you know, right. so that's, so that's pretty big for me. That's mentorship, right? I mean, she's your, she's your teacher and you're, you're a teacher, like mm -hmm. same, like I'm a, I'm a teacher and I have teachers mm -hmm. above me and we get mm -hmm. empowered by that. That's, that's the yeah. master, master apprentice, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's how it's going. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to university for, you know, four years or whatever, five years and uh -huh. I left and it was it was okay, but I don't I don't feel like I came out with like any sort of superpowers. Mm -hmm. But having working with a mentor like that, somebody that's mm -hmm. doing it, it's not mm -hmm. just the the content, but it's the support, right? I mean, you get, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, it's so yeah. powerful. That's cool, and that I mean mm -hmm. empowerment. That's uh, something that you had mentioned before, mm -hmm. as sort of your key, yeah, gift or yeah, empowering empowering your actors that you work with mm. so, um, when do you feel most empowered um yeah pretty much when we when i'm coaching actors online you know there i've, I've witnessed many instances where actors you know overcome their fears and mm. uh really go for it, you know, because this technique is quite intense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> remembering that. Yeah, and uh, it's a drama, so you cannot mm. just, you know, just calmly have this daily conversation type of thing. It's, it's kind of drama, and it's, mm. you got to go for it, you know, take risks, take risks and sort of uh, and the overcome. The stakes are high. Yeah, the stakes has to be high and mm -hmm. you have to overcome 
um, resolve, you know, unresolved issues mm -hmm. when you're acting in the scene. So right. it's, it, it can get really intense. And uh, when I watch witness uh, my actors who who really do that for us, you yeah. know, I feel really empower you to empower myself that's mm. what i feel is because mm. uh you know purpose of being an acting coach is also empower i need to empower you to empower myself that's mm. that's what i learned from ivana as well as right. a seen objective or you know and the technique i mean i i experienced it as well sometimes i was i was doing one of these numbers you know it's like you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta get deeper in there and, and you in your technique i mean you get into your your own life as well right it's not just some surface acting mm -hmm. you have to find that yeah. in your own history or mm -hmm. so i remember a couple of times being like i i don't want to do this right now you know yeah like go for it come on let's... and then <laughs> she told me was crying i remember once i was shouting and she told me was crying <laughs> like right yeah powerful man. it's actually you know it's actually working with the subconscious so that's why you know, really face your shit. And uh, uh, it's actually changing your subconscious. So your life also changes, you know, this is not a therapy. Ivana never mentions this as a therapy and uh, mm -hmm. it's only using your shit in your work. And uh, that's that's the beautiful thing. And, but I also, that it definitely does have a sort of a therapeutic, uh, um, impact to mm. uh to your life right although it's not something you can you know you can sort of try to heal yourself through acting it's it's something that accidentally happens it's it's mm. very cathartic so mm -hmm. it does have a therapeutic impact but uh, it's something that you don't intend to heal or it's not to be used as therapy. So that's right. a sort of a interesting mm -hmm. point. You know? Yeah. And I actually did need something else. Like I was mentioning this counseling right, right. outside of this acting technique, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, yeah, I think um, working on your subconscious, it's, it's a really interesting journey and uh, yeah. 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 But the, this technique definitely does help your life as well. Mm. It's, help, it's helped me for sure. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, because we're kind of overlooking the fact that you're Japanese, and uh, when did you start learning English? I mean, your English is just phenomenal. You know. Um, what was the inspiration? I, I mean, what, why? Like English? What was the... Well, the interesting thing is like... Uh, It has to do with uh, my uh, traumatic uh, years in junior high school and high school mm. because uh, I couldn't stand uh, being in that environment where the bullies rule. Mm. And uh, for some reason, I was dreaming about escaping to the US throughout my junior high schools, you know. Wow. The English was, of course, taught in school, but usually Japanese students never get to speak English because it's just, you know, routinely taught to read and write in a very, very dull and boring kind of way. You know, this is a pen. Mm -hmm. What time is it? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's a life or death survival <laughs> situation. I have to go to the U.S. to escape this <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. So... You know, I was not just uh, not just learning English. I was just gonna absorb everything mm. at that time. Anything to some anything to do with English. I, I, I actually, I thought I have to become American. You know, when I was in junior high school, that's crazy. I'm gonna be American, and that's that's that was a mindset, and that wow. actually helped me learn English. You know, because uh, I, yeah. I thought I could I could not sound like this Japanese teachers whose pronunciations were terrible. So right, right. I was just always you know, trying to imitate uh, 
Americans or British sound. And uh, right. I also you know, listen to music, like rock music, and I try right. to listen, sing to it. And I watch the Hollywood films and kind of mm. try to get absorbed into that world. And, and that helps, you know. So that's why, <laughs> for me, I was a very irregular kind of a student, English student in Japanese junior high school. Because mm. I didn't care about what others were pronouncing, you know. Their pronunciation was terrible. I, it's not English. So <laughs> I have to sound like American or whatever, you know. Right. That's how I learned, pick up this pronunciation. Right, right. Oh, you know, I was, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Eventually. Anomaly, and I didn't, I didn't care, you know. <laughs> And I think that's required, you know, if you really want to learn to speak English. And it's because it's, it's an anomaly in Japanese schools to be able to oh, pick right. up English like this, you know. Right, right. And you can get bullied for that. I've heard of people getting bullied because their English is good, like some of the kids. Yeah, that, that's also, yeah. Right. Um, when you went to the States, did you like school there? Was that better? It was better for me, you know, mm -hmm. high school. <laughs> right. Even though... It was a very small town in Wisconsin. I I, lo I loved it there. Oh, good. Because uh, cause I, because I was ready to change my outlook on life when I was mm. there. Because I you know, remember I wanted to be American. So that's right. You played it. <laughs> you played on the football team. You were an American football team. Yeah, so. I played it. Yeah, that's great. Played football. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> did I mean? Did you know anything about football when you went? You just joined the team, or? Yeah, I didn't know anything. It just. <laughs> But I knew there was a thing called American football. Right, just, right, right. Yeah. Which is just football. So if you're in America, just do try as when the Romans, you know, when that's the right. Romans do. So that's what I did. You know? Gotcha. Yeah, that was that, that tickled me. Like, oh, yeah, I, I was on the football team. It's like, wow, that's, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was interesting because I, I didn't, I don't think, like, this, just earlier today I was reading a book and they were talking about school, sort of the social engineering of school and, I never liked school. Uh, even, mm. even there was, you know, it was pretty easy, but I, I never, even in the university, I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't really enjoy being in school. I, yeah, now I know why, but, um, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the kind of situation that you had like that. So, mm. um, what would you say now? I'm going to switch the, mm. switch the conversation yeah. a bit to mm -hmm. what's like right now, what's mm -hmm. most challenging for you? as an entrepreneur? Okay, so I think that, you know, as I mentioned earlier that uh, I have overcome the biggest fear that was coming from my, especially uh, junior high school days. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something to do with uh, standing up to face the fear. And uh, so now I really have to, uh, I need, really, not have to, but I want to uh, get out mm. there in the mm. real world. I mean, although I'm in the real world, I've been, you know, doing business for some time, but mm. uh, still I felt this is not, this is still like uh, not real business, I feel. It's very mm. small scale and it's, right. you know, not really making much, much of a profit. So, mm. um, but I feel like once I've, overcome all these fears. I still have different fears from childhood. So I mm. I feel like I have to overcome all these things, worked on it. And mm. uh, but as I worked on my past and at the same time tackle the present uh, uh, tasks of the business. Um, I haven't really been really doing much of a business thing at all. Like sales is quite important. Mm. Uh, promotion and uh, all these, especially uh, sales and marketing is a very important part of business. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really doing it. So I think I'm ready to uh, tackle these areas that that is absolutely uh mandatory to be a successful entrepreneur so right. i will be uh, tackling these same yeah i think marketing and sales are 
you can have an amazing product or amazing service world class but if you don't put it out there where people can see it right and also uh community building as well huge because uh and i had a very big issue to be a leader of the community or you know read my people that kind of thing because mm. i had this i had this fear of group mm. right i i could never belong to any group you know come to think of it in retrospect i i never really belonged anywhere so you know i was kind of like always rejecting the group that i because i was always sort of individualistic i was a loner so same you know yeah that will... so i need to work on it it's funny because a lot of you know i would call myself an introvert but i think a lot of people would see me as an extrovert but mm -hmm. i feel more comfortable i like I, I like being in a group once I'm in a group, but I don't mm -hmm. want to go out to, you know, I, I'm, be, I'm better now, but you know, that's huge, right? Connections and, mm -hmm. and meeting people. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Cause that's in a form that's marketing too. Just getting your face out there and here's what yeah. I do. And mm -hmm. that's how we met, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so how, how can people find you? I think, you know, you, you've talked about what you do. Um, you know, if, if people want to learn about your acting classes, where do they go to um, see you? I have a website, uh, although not, it's not updated okay. very much, but uh, I do have a website, It's although it's only in, in, in Japanese. Okay. Uh, I do also have a Facebook group, also it's, it's in Japanese. Uh, yeah, I really don't have the English... Uh, <laughs> information but uh you can contact me uh and i i, I, can, I will communicate to you back in english and that's okay. no problem so this is yeah. uh okay i'll uh, i'll i'll put the links below the video so that there's there's a connection there um yeah mm -hmm. is there anything else there's final final words anything you want to share at the end anything that we missed well it's been very uh kind of uh very inspiring uh, conversation i was mm. i never thought i was you know i would talk about these things but uh, Good, the yeah. way it went was quite impromptu and uh, spontaneous and yeah i really liked what uh, what we ended up talking so yeah talking that's, about, the, so that, that's mm. the way we roll that's the way we roll yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i knew it would be like this anyway i did you know uh -huh. uh, I just wanted it to be natural. I, I really appreciate you sharing that because that's uh, and that can help someone. Somebody can and watch this and maybe have the, the have the same issue, right? And mm, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely so definitely do. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Tetsuya. You're uh, you're manning up, man. That's uh, thanks for thank you, timing, thank you, man. Bodhi. Yeah, manning up the time manning of up. manning up, manning up here and now. <laughs> yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, in the arena. Yes. So. Thank you, brother. In the um, house. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah. We'll be in touch again. See yeah. you. Yeah. We will. See you.